did we sort of look around that room with the wild and be like who really knows how to win a cup here? Like, <laughs> like you're a good, you're an okay player, but yeah. do you know how to win a cup? What is going on with the Minnesota Wild? Judd Zolgad, an eternal optimist, helps us break it down. Pour yourself a glass of Jim Beam, the newest sponsor of Bardown Beauties for this one. As always, all of that and more. Also presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Better Edge and State Farm Insurance agent Tony Hoagland at champlininsurance.com. This is episode 71. Gear up with the hottest merch in the state, courtesy of SodaStick.com. Snag a throwback Tony Oliva hitting school tee to celebrate baseball season, or keep the hockey vibes year-round with a plethora of on-ice merch. Be sure you're staying tuned to our social channels for a chance at a $50 Soda Stick gift card giveaway. Bar Down Beauties at checkout will always get you that free shipping. Happy shopping. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting Let's Play Hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the State of Hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company in Corporate Claremont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. We back. Episode 71 of Bar Down Buttes. A lot of great stuff. Uh, first shout out to Jim Beam woo -woo, for coming on board with the sponsor train. Choo choo. Um, pretty excited. We've got some solid sponsors, Alexis. I'm, yeah. I'm jacked. They like us. People like us, man. Yeah. Well, and Jim Beam's all aboard the hockey train and Bar Down Beauties is a hockey podcast. So it just made sense, right? So welcome aboard, Jim Beam. Uh, we're happy to have you. As always, happy to have Better Edge as well. We'll just kick off and do our little <laughs> thank yous to everybody. Uh, we got some really exciting stuff planned for Better Edge. Um, again, your online legal gambling sports betting page, uh, locally owned here by some guys who uh, are, are pretty fun. They're changing the way that gambling, sports gambling works. So definitely visit betteredge.com, B-E-T-T-O-R edge.com. Snag a free 10 bucks, bet against me. Um, we'll have some fun playoff things. Be sure to check out for my video on how I walk you through sports betting because I get to learn with you and uh, we'll have lots to talk about with the NHL playoffs. But Speaking of playoffs, let's first talk about how the wild are doing. They clinched <laughs> the pl a playoff spot officially on last Saturday yeah. in San Jose and haven't won a game since. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Nobody hit the panic button. They are in the playoffs. Um, and for some reason they have struggled against the blues all season. And I don't really know why. And the blues are playing good hockey right now. So they've given the wild some pains here. Uh, we're recording this on a Friday. So there's one more game coming up against them this weekend before this episode is released, but they unfortunately dropped the first two, one in regulation, one in OT. Um, and you know, they, they've had kind of this issue all season where they don't play complete games. And I think they've, you know, we talked about this a little bit, you know, in, in other episodes and whatnot, but they're in a pretty easy division. I mean, you look at the league and you look it's at the, the easiest teams. one. It's the I mean, I think one. we can't tell ourselves any differently. If yes. you're playing LA Anaheim, San Jose, and even toss in Arizona. It's, yep. it's the easiest division guys. I'm sorry. So you don't necessarily, you know, not that you ever don't want to play 60 minutes. That's not what I'm trying to say, but you can get away with it in games against teams who aren't playing complete games themselves. Uh, but against the teams who do play those complete games and do wear you down like a team, like the St. Louis blues, the wild ha have found some struggles this season, which I think is one of my biggest concerns going to the playoffs. Like they're going to get matched up against a really good team. So can they hang with them and can they stick it to them and, and get some wins um, in some some games and hopefully some series this postseason, but uh, you never want to coast down the remainder of the season. I don't care when you clinch that playoff spot. If you clinch the division, whatever it may be, you want to finish out the season strong because you want all of your best players firing on all cylinders when the time really matters, which is going to be postseason. And if you start to take your foot off the gas, just because you clinched a spot and it really in, in the big scheme of things doesn't matter if you win these last handful of games, um, it's just not a good look. And so I'm hoping they can clean up their play a little bit, get some, some stronger performances from, from the very beginning to the end um, and finish out the season strong because the playoffs are going to be tough um, and they got to be ready for it. I mean, yeah, we asked Dean Epson that question earlier this week uh, during media availability. Like, so are you going to give guys <laughs> nights off if they're feeling banged up, bruised, get healthy? And he's like, no, absolutely not. Because they're able to move up. There's no reason yeah. that you have to sit stagnant in uh -huh. the third spot. I mean, they're they not could technically still win the division. Yeah. Like, like you could, shot, but they could. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And why not better your position? Why not get home? I said, advantage. Why yep. not shoot for the moon? Um, and especially now is the time to work out those kinks, right? You need to figure yeah. out what the problem is. I think you had said it best, Alexis there. 
they've been playing incomplete games consistently. That's the one thing that they do consistently is not <laughs> play a full 60. And you've seen that yeah. so far in the St. Louis blues. We've got a lot to dive into in wild talk with our guest Judd Zulglad, Zulgad, um, of uh, score North. So I'm excited to talk a little bit more about that, but we also talked with Kirill Kaprizov guys. You're right. Yeah, that's right. I'm just giddy. Look at <laughs> my voice just do gross. Um, it's uh, so we're going to actually hear from him. We talked about the call to race. Alexis and I have given you our take. I made a TikTok pissed off a lot of <laughs> Dallas stars fans the other night about it. Um, you know, Kaprizov continues to do his thing. 23 goals as of recording today. Can't deny it. Um, but what does Kirill think about the call to race? Here's what he had to say. Как сказать, я в принципе старался об этом особо не думать, но у нас у всех есть соцсети. И... I, I try not to think about it or but you know with today's day and age of social media everyone has you know Instagram and things like that I, I'm constantly getting messages I see it everywhere so it's hard not to notice it but you know personally I don't really think about it too much I don't stress about it um, obviously it's always great to to win something but for me personally the team uh, performance is first and any personal accolades come after that kind of going off of social media Instagram like has Jason Robertson and his name being thrown around there, has that motivated you at all? Or am I reading too much into that? Yeah, like I said before, I, I really don't think about it much, but again, with all the Instagram, you do see it. And of course, seeing another opponent there, you, you, you know, you can, it helps motivate you. You seem like you want to do better and, and that's as any competitor would. But other than that, I, I really don't focus or think about it to be honest. For for the reporters, it's probably quite a bit of clickbait and uh, to get the ratings up. But for me personally, I, I really don't think about it much. Thank you, Kirill. I, I do love talking to him. I can't wait <laughs> till the day that we can actually like talk without a translator in between yeah. us. Um, but I mean, add that to another tally of why he's awesome. Put the yeah. team first and always, I mean, even in that course of the very lengthy conversation we had with him and that talking more than just Calder, I mean, he's quick to say, yeah, I could still improve defensively. I could still improve here, here, and here, um, which takes such a level of maturity, you know, for, for any player to admit to and for him to know and recognize that there's still room for him to mm -hmm. grow um, is great. I mean, I'm not, I'm still not concerned that he doesn't win this. I think toss the heart at him too while we're at it, right? I yeah. mean, it's just kind of hard not to uh, not to like the guy and not to want yeah. to see him win something big like this. Well, and I think the, the the other thing that I didn't really talk about in my rant last week that my dad and I were talking about <laughs> the, one the other thing day. You didn't get to rant about. <laughs> well, there were so many things to touch on, and I just didn't have enough time. Um, but my dad and I were talking about this last night, and I thought he kind of brought up a really good point about how when you break down the the stats between the two of them, just individually what they're doing on their teams, Kirill Kaprizov has a, a sizable lead as far as goals go. And give mm -hmm. me the guy who's going to score goals. And why does Kirill Kaprizov have less assists? Probably, this is speculation, but you can probably say that this is what it is. He's got... Victor Rask, who he's playing with, and Matt Zuccarello, who refuses to shoot the puck. I mean, how many prime <laughs> scoring opportunities has Zuccarello had that he's either passed up on, missed on, whiffed on, whatever? And Zuccarello is a great player. He's played very well with Kaprizov this season. Mm -hmm. He's kind of grown into the player of the wild. We're hoping he was going to be when they brought him on. Victor Rask is Victor Rask. I don't have enough time to get into that. But Kirill Kaprizov <laughs> has a sizable lead in goals where Robertson has more of the assist. And who is Robertson feeding? Joe Pavelski, one of the better players in the NHL to ever play, and Rupe Hintz. So, I mean, you look at the, the line combinations, they're ma the line mates they're matched up with, and, and just kind of the breakdown of their overall game. To your point, Jesse, I don't see how they don't give it to Kaprizov. And that's trying to not be a homer, just looking at it stats-wise. Legit and, good hockey player, yes, right? Like, 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 that's what just, I see. So <laughs> that's that. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, to that point, and again, we dive into this with our guest Judd coming up here, but I mean, without Kirill Kaprizov, the Minnesota Wild are not in the position that they're in right now. They are not nope. the team that they've become. So that is actually the heart yes. trophy winner, if I'm not mistaken, the yes. MVP who has changed the dynamic of a team. So that's why I'm tossing that vote in there. And again, it's not even a homer status. You know me guys, I love the wild, but yeah, Jesse will be down to him if I need to, you know, <laughs> yep. like I, I, he is, he's just a phenomenal hockey player. And it's, it's amazing to see him that he's in a wild Jersey doing this. I would say yeah. even if he was in Chicago, even I would be like, no, yeah. dude, that dude needs to win this Calder. It's, it's phenomenal. So, um, very exciting again, shout out to all of our Russian fans hopefully you get that we still love him we do <laughs> we really do um and jason robertson no not gonna happen irrelevant <laughs> irrelevant uh speaking of young minnesota wild prospect players 
a very kind of heart wrenching, but positive story from Mr. Michael Russo on the athletic earlier last week, um, with an update on Marco Rossi, who suffered the same ailment that Alex Stalock had suffered, Mm -hmm. uh, post COVID. And it was just really awful to hear how scared he was again for a 19 year old kid Mm -hmm. on the cusp of beginning his NHL career coming off of this, you know, tremendous season and, and looking toward a bright future and to have to struggle with this and do this back at home. You know, luckily he's been able to do it back yeah. at home in Austria with his family. Um, but very, very good art- article. If you guys haven't read, be sure to go do that. Um, Alexis, what were your reactions overall to that? I mean, again, it's nice to finally get an update, but it's a good reminder that definitely more about hockey. Bill Guerin told yes. us last week that we're treating him like a human before yeah. a hockey player and reading Russo's articles. You can see why. Yeah, that's, that's the first thing that I take away from this whole situation, not just the article, but just from the beginning to end of beginning to where we're at now with this Marco Rossi situation is this is a kid. He's 19. I mean, this is a scary situation for anyone, but especially a kid. I mean, I can't imagine at 25 uh, going through what he went through. And like you said, you know, coming into this new career and ready for this next phase of his life. And then it just gets put on pause. And you're just like, not only are you worried about what your future is going to look like, but you're worried in the moment of like, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to be able to do what I was planning on doing? Uh, Can I perform to the level I was hoping to perform? Am I even going to survive? I mean, these are questions that at 19 years old, he went through his head probably a ton of times. Um, And so I I just feel bad for him on a human level that he experienced this at all. And I quite frankly, don't care how long he takes to, to, to get healthy and to get back. I just want him to get to a point where he's he's healthy, he's happy, and he's ready to, to play hockey and to live his life. And this wild team will wait as long as they need to, because like Bill Guerin said, it's not about hockey. It's about him taking care of his health and recovering from a very, very scary thing health-wise. Um, and so thankful, like you said, that he was able to do this at home, in the comfort of his own home, around his family. Um, it would obviously be a lot harder if he would have been stuck here in Minnesota or stuck in the United States. Um, and so that is a positive spin on it. And, and the best part is that things are looking up and looking better for him and just hoping that he gets back to 100% um, and he can start his career like he planned on doing. Absolutely. Because certainly, again, putting the hockey spin on it, of course, everyone in Minnesota is very excited to have him join this team and make the impact that he's perceived to do. But it is, it's, it's a scary situation. And I'm glad to hear he's on the up and up. Sounds like he'll start training as well, but our thoughts go out to him as he Mm -hmm. continues to kind of recover, even mentally, because again, it's a, that's a scary situation and you don't, you still don't know the long-term effects Mm -hmm. of everything, right? It might be done now, but does it come back? Do we have to monitor this consistently? I think Alex Dalak, when we spoke with him about it, he wasn't sure. I mean, he felt fine. Mm -hmm. He obviously was ready to go, but it's a long road ahead for everybody. So um, kudos to Russo on a tremendous article as always. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, also, so kudos to Marco Rossi as well for being so open and, and yeah. honest and sharing what he's going through. Uh, final thing I want to touch on this week, Alexis, before we get to our guest, Mr. Judd, uh, NWHL doubling the salary cap. <laughs> what does that mean exactly? Yeah. Is it enough? I mean, is it a big step for why is that important? I mean, stupid question, but I'll say, I mean, why is that important? <laughs> yeah. Right. Why do, why do we need to make note of such a big increase uh, for the salary cap for the NWHL? What does that mean for players as well? Well, uh, one of my favorite saying is that uh, baby steps forward is still uh, steps forward. And no, it's not enough, but it is a massive step. It's not even a baby step. It's a big step. And it, it was, I was so excited to, to see the press release of it and to see people talking about it on Twitter. And honestly, I tweeted a tweet about it and I got hundreds of, of likes and retweets and comments. I mean, seeing how excited people were about this made me so happy that it wasn't like this tweet just went off into the Twitter abyss and nobody ever paid attention to it. Um, I was just so excited that like people so were happy. Like so many of my <laughs> And mine. <laughs> um, I was just so excited about it. And um, so it went from 150000 to 300000 uh, for the salary cap. And there's a couple things about this that make it exciting. A, these women are going to start to get paid more starting next season, which is huge. Um, and B, the reason that they are able to pay them more is because they got so many sponsorships in season six. And what is a sponsorship? It means you believe in the product of something and you want that product to continue to thrive, to be able to give back to the people who are making the product what it is. Um, AKA the players, the, the, um, the coaches, the GMs, all the people who make the NWHL run. Um, and they secured that massive discover uh, sponsorship at the end of the season, yeah. which was huge. Um, and so because of all these sponsorships, they are now able to pay women more. It is, it is 
quite literally a, a big circle. You, you, <laughs> you get the product out there. Someone sees it and believes in it. They want to give you money to keep it going. That money goes back into the product and the circle just continues to turn and turn and turn. And so it is a very exciting step um, for the NWHL and hopefully the first of many steps to increase that salary cap and pay these women more. Um, but just really happy to see that news come out this week. I mean, I think that was kind of my biggest reaction was like, well, it should still be more. The NHL yeah. <laughs> still has quite a bit more, but I love what you had said, Alexis, about, you know, baby steps are still steps forward. So yep. I think that's tremendously important and, and congratulations to the NWHL and to all the players that will yeah. be able to benefit a little bit from that and all the teams as well. Um, it's, it's great to see that league continue to grow. I know it's always been kind of up and down and back and yep. forth and you, you hear so much chatter and sometimes not always positive around mm-hmm. the way women's hockey is going, but they're really trying to get out there and, and make it a positive experience for yep. women and try to do the right things on their own, basically yeah. with investors, right? It's not yep. at all like the NHL with all these big names swooping in ready to, yep. uh, to help out. So also shout out to discover for obviously making that big investment and believing in the women and the organization. So that's going to do it for segment one. We're going to take a quick break when we come back. We'll be right back. Want to rep some Bar Down Beauties merch? We've got you covered, literally. Whether you want to show that you're an official beaut or that you do not, in fact, support Chirping Duluth, we've got it all. So make sure you check out Bar Down Beauties on Teespring. We're back. Joining us now, Score North's favorite personality. Uh, no, not Declan. Just kidding, Judd. Just <laughs> kidding. The uh, the eternal optimist, Mr. Judd Zolgad. Judd, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm great. I'm I'm enthused because this is as good as I have felt about the wild in Ooh. probably five years. I mean, it's been <laughs> a long time since I have felt this good about this team. I see real. Uh, I see a good future here, and I think they could win a playoff series. I really do. Well, well, tell us about that. Tell us what, yeah. you know, what is it that's making this team unique? Is it the players? Is it the change in coaching? Is it finally having Kirill Kaprizov here? What is standing out to you? That's giving you some, some hope. We know us Minnesota hockey yeah. people don't have hope. Minnesota sports fans in general, what is so giving true. it to you this year? And, and so, I do need to say, I brought you on because I assumed you'd be the pessimist to my <laughs> optimism, but I like it. I'm, I'm all on board of the positivity train then. Um, Kaprizov won. I mean, <laughs> he, he's a superstar. Like how, how many, I, I think that that less than a full season in, he is already the best player in franchise history. Gabrick was good. He was really good. But this guy's a superstar. He can do everything. He's strong. He can score. He works his butt off. Um, but I also I also love what, and I'll give him credit, what Paul Fenton started and Bill Guerin continued. The reconstruction of this roster to me, it's not done yet. Mm -hmm. but they've made so many, I think, important moves and, and the additions of two guys and they're not star players, but they make a difference. I think on and off the ice, Nick Bonino and, and also Cole. I mean, those two guys to me, they've got cups, they've got credibility. And, and if they stand up and talk, I think it carries weight. And, and the Bonino thing I absolutely love is this. He's the one guy like in post games that, that uh, Gorg will talk to <laughs> and they've just won a game. Right. Yeah. And Benino is dead serious. He <laughs> talks about what they did wrong. I love that. Cause that's the playoffs, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like that's a play. I mean, this guy clearly knows what it takes to win a, a cup. And for how long d- did we sort of look around that room with the wild and be like, who really knows how to win a cup here? Like, <laughs> like you're a good, you're an okay player, but yeah. do you know how to win a cup? I love the mentality now. And, and I really think that Bill Guerin has done a great job of addressing what this team needs to not be just a good team, but to be a good playoff team, which to me is a very different thing than we're playing well in January. Well, and well, I think, last- you know, sorry, I was going to say, I love oh, that you ahead. brought that up, Judd, because naturally I've had the privilege with NHL.com to see other locker rooms frequently. And that was one major difference that I always pointed to with the wild is like, you'd have other teams that would still address the negativities, even if they had one or not in the wild kind of gave you that whole hum <laughs> answer. Like, sure. Playing you know, we Barbie gotta get world pucks deep. We got to get fucks to the net. Like it was. And so I completely agree with you. And I think Benino and Cole are a huge attestment to that, or even Cam Talbot the other night mm-hmm. with yep. the loss to St. Louis, right. You, uh, 
you never really saw Devin Dubnik fall on that sword like Cam Talbot did at all. So I think that's such a shift. And again, we could talk about it over and over again, the culture and dynamic of the team. I mean, do you credit that to Bill Guerin? Like you said, bringing in these guys, do you think it's Dean Ebsen bringing in some different kind of mojo as well? Because I think we can't continue to give him enough credit as, as well. Just, he seems to be doing something that's resonating with these guys. Dean's done a really good job, but I really think it starts with Bill. I, I, I mean, Bill is a guy who, who was a captain, uh, won cups as a player, then won a couple cups as an executive with Pittsburgh. Um, I really think the seismic shift starts with him. And what I love was he got the job late after uh, Paul got fired, and he came in and clearly like just watched things, right? Like he didn't come in and like, I'm going to shake things up right away. He did the smart thing. He watched things and he watched guys. And I mean, he traded away some good players. Mm-hmm. But they didn't fit to go to your word, because I think it's incredibly important, especially in sports, is culture. Mm-hmm. They didn't fit the culture. So I think the changes started with Paul, but Bill knew exactly what he was trying to get, which is not guys who are going to be, oh man, I'm I'm super fast and I've got skills. Okay, but could you come to play consistently and and the last two games against the blues have been disappointing but i'll tell you right now here's what i take from both those games i'm somewhat surprised <laughs> like think about that previous teams you'd, you'd be like of course they lost those games <laughs> i so like i am i am pleasantly surprised that i'm surprised that when they now take a turn where it doesn't go well i'm actually saying i didn't expect that And I love that because that, again, gives me hope that the mentality here is a playoff one because the playoffs are a pain in the ass. They're really hard. Um, And if you're like ho-hum or we'll try tomorrow, that don't work come the playoffs. Well, and I think that, you know, a big thing that happened, you know, a year, year and a half ago was there was the talk among wild fans of, oh, the team is the team rebuilding or is it rebuild time? Are we getting rid of all these players? What's happening? I go in full New York or Chicago. (laughs) (laughs) I always refer to it as a quote unquote restructure rather than a rebuild because they weren't starting over. They weren't getting rid of every, they weren't selling the farm, but they were making, you know, like you mentioned, Judd, very significant changes and getting rid of the players who didn't fit what they were looking for on that team. Mm -hmm. Um, and now we're in a much better position and people always forget that rebuilds can take years. It doesn't mean you're going to win a Stanley cup in the next season. It can take a long time before the pieces that you move around start to fit into place. Um, and as we sit at this point with less than 10 games in the regular season, we're all happy with the way the wild have played this season, but we also understand there's some things that need to change. Uh, Judd, what do they need to fix going into the postseason? Cause whether we get the golden Knights or the goddamn Colorado avalanche is going to be a <laughs> tough series. Uh, what do they need to change to get a win in that first round? Which you said they can do. Let me give you one bit of hope about the abs <laughs> who clearly are the bet, the better team. Okay. Like skill wise, they, they just are they're, yeah. <laughs> they're great. That top line is incredible. Let me give you one thing there though. Is Grubauer healthy? Because if he's not, and and I think he's back tonight. And if but if he comes back, <laughs> fine, that's yeah. fine. But Jesse, we all saw this. If Devin Dubnik has to play goal, <laughs> it completely it's a seismic change in yeah. what the expect because he he could submarine that team by himself. <laughs> I've seen like three games and he's still giving up the Dubnik goals. Yep. Oh my gosh, I made a great save. And then a puck bounced off my breezers. What happened? <laughs> um, the thing that has to change is one, it started last night. Victor Rask cannot be playing with Zuccarello and Kaprizov mm-hmm. in the playoffs. He's not fast enough. Quite frankly, I don't think he is anywhere near skilled in, enough to play. I'm not saying he has to be scratched, mm-hmm. um, but this is why, and I've been told I'm crazy by <laughs> some, this is why. I would have at least given Sturm a look on that line because if I'm playing the abs, so here, here's my theory. If I'm playing the abs, I'm trying to get the Eck line against the McKinnon line yeah. as much as possible. Cause the one thing Bear is down and McKinnon gets frustrated and, mm-hmm. and PO'd and Eck will, will do exactly that. <laughs> so does Landeskog too. I feel exactly. like Landeskog's got the temper as well, that they're going to, yeah, they don't like to put up with that for sure. And if, I mean, maybe helmets get thrown, who knows? We'll, see. well, <laughs> well and, and the most important thing is if your guys wear them down, but don't, but don't retaliate, 
that's how you sort of start to shift that. Yep. Um, so if that's the case, then then you need a line to be your line, your fast line, right? That's Kaprizov, Zuccarello, and whom? And I'd really like to see Sturm with those guys, not because he's not going to screw up. He will. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he doesn't get it completely yet. But think about the speed and skill, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I want I want Kaprizov to have a facilitator, which they really don't have right now, mm -hmm. but in the playoffs, who is as who is as full throttle as possible. Right. Um, so that's why that's why I do think if they're going to win a first round series, there do have to be some changes. That being said, I think they can win a round. I don't think they can make a deep run yet. The centers aren't there. Like they yeah. need, they need two more. Um, but I love how they're tracking and I think they're going to give a team, a good team, real problems. Like they're not, I don't think it's go going to be a, Oh, we played five hard games. And <laughs> we didn't yeah. get to the net that to go back that blues series a few years back drives me crazy to this yep. day because Where they lost in five. Yes. And yeah. And, and look, Jake was great. Jake Allen. I, yeah, Jake right. Allen, great goal, okay? Mm -hmm. But do you guys recall what drove me nuts about that? Was that was that was a shots on goal series. Mm -hmm. Like, look at all the shots the Wild have. And then you picked up the shot chart and they were like from the blue line. They were, yeah. <laughs> they didn't get to the net. That was yeah. one of the most, I mean, I go back to that season all the time because I think that was my first year covering the Wild for the NHL. And that was a dominant year for Minnesota. I mean, their mm -hmm. offense was out of control. Everybody was performing. Mikhail Granlin, that was one of his best seasons, I think, to date. I mean, that was, I think that's what made that loss so, so bitter. It was like, oh my God, this was finally the team that finally came together. The, the vision of Chuck Fletcher, if you will, right? I mean, it was, <laughs> God, it was just awful. But I look at Cam Talbot and I'm like, can he do what Jake Allen's done then as well, right? I mean, last night, I think, you saw him frustrated. I don't think, I think that was probably the least composed I've seen him play Judd. And I know you were covering the draft last night, so I'm not sure how much you caught, but I mean, other than that, he seems very, very strong. Do you think Capo is going to get another shot a little bit? I mean, you ride the hot hand and Capo did great in Cam's absence. And I think it's important. It was exciting and promising that they had two goaltender tandems, but I'm not sure that's the case anymore. My primary criticism of Dean is that goaltending. <laughs> Um, this schedule is too condensed and, and yeah. it's too tight. I don't get why Capo doesn't play. And, and look, when the playoffs start, ride Cam, right? Mm -hmm. But Cam last night played back to backs and, and I saw the goals that he allowed and he looked tired, which, okay, I get that. I totally get that. But Dean, you've clinched a playoff spot. <laughs> there is no downside to, to having, uh, Cockett and prepared to play like there's no bad about that um I don't I don't like that they're riding Talbot because I'm, I'm afraid that they're going to ride him into the ground mm -hmm. and then be like well the playoffs are here can you play on a nightly basis <laughs> that's the one thing I don't get and Cabo is not bad like we've seen mm -hmm. him play if yeah. this was if this was Dubnik last year I sort of get that one but it's sure. not so my so my primary criticism of Dean at this point is why don't you play him more just to get him just to, if nothing else, to get cam some type of rest. Right. And I wonder, I, you know, I thought about this yesterday when we heard, cause I asked Dean, I said, is it Capo tonight? Or, and he's like, no, it's cam. And which again, takes me by surprise. Any back to back that you play a goaltender mm -hmm. night after night. I mean, St. Louis at Jordan Bennington for crying out loud. Right. <laughs> I mean, they, they yeah. didn't go the back to back route. Um, but I almost wonder if that was cam kind of going to Dean and saying, Hey, I want to go again, because you could tell at the end of Wednesday night's game, that frustration was just seething in him. Right. Because I think he knew that he was capable and he turned away like 28 shots, I believe mm -hmm. in that first game. So, I mean, I think, I wonder how much he had to say in that. And I wonder how much Dean does listen. I mean, what are your thoughts there? I know we've talked about the Zach Parisi's and, you know, getting benched and seeing the decline in those older veteran players playing time, which has obviously benefited the team. I mean, no disrespect to them, but it's obviously worked out. Um, how do you think that communication goes between coach and player? Do you think that Dean does take a different approach than maybe Bruce Boudreaux's or Mike Yo's or, or Torts in the past? Uh, what are your thoughts there? I think he might, do, uh, but my problem is, is this, especially for a position like that where guys get tired. Mm -hmm. I think you have to say, Cam, you played great. Uh, <laughs> we, we lost, unfortunate. 
you are going to come back and start Saturday, mm-hmm. but I'm not going back to back. And then probably Saturday ag- again. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying if I'm Dean to look at, at this from uh, the schedule stinks. Like it's mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. It's fun for fans. Mm-hmm. It's awful. I mean, if you're a player, you, you are playing constantly and you're yeah. playing the same teams and the blues are a tiring team to play. They're mm-hmm. a heavy team. They're like the wild, frankly, right? Beat you up. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think they, they are, but I, I think they're actually a, a more physical team mm-hmm. consistently like deeper. Uh, but my point is if, D, if cam came to Dean and said, Oh, coach, I'd like to go again. I would have said Saturday for sure, dude. Is that how he sounds too? I kind of like, ah, coach, <laughs> coach, I gotta. coach, I'd like to go again. That's, you know, ho- hockey players. <laughs> Can I play a, I'd like to play again. A, um, but yeah, I, I really think the one thing is if you're going to win a playoff series, Cam Talbot has to be fresh. And I don't like how it's tracking where he just, it seems like keeps playing. Um, I also did not like the fact that Capo was left in, in, against the blues a couple weeks back to give up nine goals. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I, that's lacking in, in an understanding of that job, which yeah. is incredibly mental. Um, <laughs> I would have, I would have said after like five goals, you know what, kid, thank you. But, but yeah. uh, Cam's going to take the rest of this game. But I think maybe those goaltenders are a little bit different than the goalies that we've been used to seeing <clears throat> Devin Dubnik's right. Cause I think <laughs> Devin was a hundred percent a very mental case, which again, going back to your point earlier with him in Colorado, I think that's going to bode so well for Minnesota. Cause especially <laughs> if they're playing the wild, he's going to feel a little on edge. So I do wonder oh, though, yeah. I think Ka- Capo maybe took that differently, but I don't totally disagree with you there entirely either but i do think that they're a little more together than maybe goalies of minnesota wild past anyway well and i was going to say too to your point about the schedule kind of being condensed judd is that we've seen over the course of the season the stats show it the eye test shows it that winning back-to-back games or that second game in the series is really tough to do because you can read your opponent so much better and these teams start to know each other really well especially as later in the season when they've played so many games against each other um, over the course of a season. I say, why not throw Capo in? Because Cam had a tough night the night before and, you know, change it up because if you just keep the same, you already know it's going to be hard to, for them to win a second game in a row. So you might as well change the lineup around a little bit and see what you can do. And uh, I, I agree that I was a little bit surprised that Talbot was put in um, just because like you said as well, couples played great this season and he's been reliable when we've needed him. And uh, you know, you, you don't want Talbot to be tired going into the playoffs because while they're going to have their hands full anyway, and that that's one thing that you're going to need for sure to be clicking come playoff time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, so that's that's the thing that I would like to see him play Capo more, and I love the fact that Rask is off that top line. Yeah. And besides, and besides that, I think they've done a really good job. Like I think they've done. This is as big of restructuring as far as attitude goes. Yeah, team, I it's been really quick. Like yeah. it's gone from being and and I love the, the fact that when the playing round. Uh, got done in Canada that Bill mm-hmm. basically went on a call. And I mean, he didn't like try and tell us, Oh man, I think this team's good. Right. Right. He said, mm-hmm. like, our goaltending stinks. We're getting <laughs> goaltending. Like right. he went through it yep. and he did the, those things and look, and a lot of fans are going to hate this. But, I'm, <laughs> but what I'm about to say, I think is one of the imperative things to the success of this team. And, and the fact that it's now trending in a different direction. I don't for one second think that this team is where this team is right now. If Koivu is still there, I really don't. And let's, d- let's dive into that then. Yeah. I mean, what it hurts uh, a little bit. You that, got a point. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, is, I mean yeah. yeah. What are all the qualities? I mean, you could easily say, cause again, he was the old regime, right? He was yes. the old guy that stood guard. So, I mean, is it that shift of leadership? What makes you kind of say that exactly? I think that there was, um, I think that there was a definite feeling with that team with Koivu and and I, I mean it, it includes uh Suter and Parisi too but mm-hmm. there was a definite feeling with that team going back to a group that was Koivu and Zucker and and then the younger kids also you know Granlund and Coyle um that they were sort of they sort of became set in their ways of how they were, were going to be which I found to be a lot of excuses as mm-hmm. Bruce li- like to say woe is me <laughs> and the Koivu thing the dynamic there I think was you're right, old guard. But you know what? 
I don't buy that people change greatly when, when the doors close. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't buy there, there are some people that don't talk to us and then talk a little bit more when, when we're gone. I get that as far as our jobs go, mm -hmm. but I think what you saw from Koivu is what you got. And I think he was incredibly stoic. <laughs> um, and I don't, I, I, I mean, he came off as a captain because he, he tried to be, the adult in the room, but I, but look at the guys that this team has now who are captain types. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the thing that hit me about why I thought that, that Koivu more off the ice than on was a detriment is, do you guys recall a couple of years back? I think it was Marcus's second year here. He started to speak up a lot. Mm -hmm. Like the first year he wasn't good and he didn't talk that much, mm -hmm. but the second year, we all, I mean, that became our go-to guy if the team didn't play well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he didn't rip people, but he flat out would say, this is yeah. unacceptable. Yep. I didn't play well. Here's what needs to change. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a captain, right? Mm -hmm. And Koivu was always sort of this surly, well, you know, we're going to look at it and like, almost like, <laughs> like, I, said, like I said, <laughs> like I said, like I said, <laughs> but he was sort of like a coach and it's like, no, yeah. that's not what a captain does. A coach does that. I get that. That's coach speak. Yeah. But Marcus would cut open a vein and it was fantastic. And I, and I was like, this guy's the captain. Yeah. So, yeah. so I just think that when you look at the different guys now, uh, Marcus, Benino, Cole, Spurgeon, you know, to, to his, to what he probably does, mm -hmm. but I think they're all true to themselves. And I really think that that's changed things. Cuevo probably could have come back as a player and played fourth line, won some faceoffs, and not been a disaster. But my point is, I don't think then that the team and its attitude shifts. And it really has. Yeah, I would agree. And I, it's like the team now is, is having fun. God mm -hmm. forbid we say no, that, right? Word. You know, I think that's, there, right. I, that's, I stress that so much. And I know part of that comes from my Minnesota hockey, youth hockey aspect of things, right? But it's so freaking true. You look at Kirill Kaprizov and that smile on his face. It's like, it's, you should be having fun. You're playing hockey. There is no reason to not have fun. Yes. Be pissed off when you lose. Yes. Be pissed off when you have a terrible shift. I mean, you're still professionals, but have some fun. And I think no disrespect to Koivo. I think it's just his Finnish attitude. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that squashes a little bit of it. And maybe some of the guys wearing the A's squashed that a little bit. So you couldn't let guys like Matt Dumba freely out, right. Or even Alex Stalock, who was such a big part of that. And Marcus Foligno, another really fun guy who can take things seriously, but it's important to be able to have fun in this game as well in order to have success and, ha and find that team unity in return, especially now with these younger guys. I think you're absolutely right, Judd. I'd be curious to see how Miko would <laughs> mesh with uh, an Ian Cole or a Kirk or Prisov or, or something like that. I mean, even Jewel Eric's neck, I think mm -hmm. you're finding coming into his own a little bit more, maybe without absolutely. big brother Miko behind him and feeling this pressure because there's been so much pressure for him to live up to that. Um, staying kind of on a Miko front, big question. Do you retire Miko Koivu's jersey <laughs> with the Minnesota Wild, or do you not? I am. I am very much on record as saying, <laughs> if I'm the Wild, I create a ring of honor, and Miko Koivu is in that. Longevity, mm -hmm. statistically, mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, there are two things working against him. One is, and it's not his fault. Well, it sort of is, but. <laughs> He wears the number nine hockey royalty yeah. hockey. I mean, the number nine in hockey is greatness. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like one, I don't want to take it out of rotation for a guy who played a long time. Yeah. The second, the second problem, there's no playoff success there. You guys, Yeah. like there's nothing like I do. I, I honor him. I bring mm -hmm. him in for a night. He drops the ceremonial first puck mm -hmm. and I'm serious. I create I create a ring that probably has Koivu, um, Gabrick, mm -hmm. possibly like Nick Schultz, like mm -hmm. all very nice players, played yeah. a long time for you. Good guys. Darby. Um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I yep. create that. And 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 I have something in the X where, you know, there's a jersey and a tribute. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're talking about numbers going to the rafters, like that's the ultimate in sports. Mm -hmm. And And I mean, I hate to say it, but the first guy in 20 years, of this team, the first guy that I've seen where I can legitimately see that 97, Ooh, like if this dang. kid, keeps, that that's, but that's a number you retire. Yeah. Like that's yeah. the difference is I don't think that you're on the hook to retire 
a number because a guy played a long time mm -hmm. with no cups. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm talking about your, your the royalty of your team mm -hmm. and Kaprizov, yeah. at least from the start, looks like he could be that type of guy. Well, let's talk about Kaprizov for a second, because I have gone on record to ranting about this <laughs> about every day for the last week, uh, the Calder race. Uh, Jason <laughs> Robertson uh, is trying to make a name for himself here and trying to give Kaprizov a run for his money. Um, and there's been a lot of great conversations about the stats behind it and comparing these two players. And we're in the home stretch of the season. Judd, what is your take? Is Kaprizov still your winner? If you have a Calder vote, and you don't vote for him. <laughs> I am taking your vote away. <laughs> Kaprizov, Kaprizov will not come close to winning this award, but he should get heart votes. Take him off this team. Mm -hmm. Take him, yeah. like, take him off. <laughs> this team is battling the Coyotes and the Blues, and they might not make the playoffs. Yeah. Like, think about last night. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many guys have you seen play for this team that unless it was a fluky play can score the four, four goal. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah. So yes, he deserves, he deserves it. And, and look, the age has been adjusted. It's the age. <laughs> yeah. Don't give me the age. The national hockey league has a parallel to this with the KHL because yep. Panarin had the same thing. Yep. He's the same. He yep. was the same age. Yep. They, they could have fixed it then. It's their choice not to recognize the KHL as a professional league, but that's right. their choice. Yep. Um, the voters, the voters have their instructions and their instructions, I think mandate mandate that Kaprizov and I, I am not a Homer in, by mm -hmm. any means, but I know <laughs> greatness when I see it, and this is greatness. So yeah, it's sh shame on you <laughs> vote for a former yeah. North star <laughs> compared to, Oh, and, but by the way, the age, got changed in 1990 when when a, a, a guy who played for the Russian national team forever mm -hmm. and was on their top line yeah. he was 31 he was 30 so yeah, yeah. Yeah. came yeah. to Calgary yeah. <laughs> and beat out Mike yep. McDonald yep. Our guy. Yep. so so you know what we deserve this in, in, in fact that's my whole stance here mm -hmm. Kaprizov <laughs> wild fans you are owed this yeah. you deserve this <laughs> Like, think about this. Yeah. Think yeah. about what we're watching. Right. I, like, we used to go to games and be like, okay, it's going to be Kane tonight, right? Yeah. Or McDavid, because <laughs> I want to see greatness. And yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, God bless Zach. Zach works his butt yep. off, mm -hmm. but he ain't a superstar. Um, yeah. We finally got that guy to watch yeah. in our town. It feels I, a little surreal, right? Like, don't you yeah. pinch yourself in the press box? Like, I know you were so jazzed about your first game, and I had been able to see him in training camp, so I already knew. I was like, Judd, this is going to be amazing, and it yeah. is. It's, it's phenomenal. I mean, I'm going to take that a step further. Minnesota deserves this yes. for crying yes. out loud. Like, Amen. my God, of course they're going to try to take this away under technicalities or argue yeah. that he doesn't deserve this. Like, he's still a kid. He's still a very young kid, and you're absolutely right. The NHL is choosing not to say the KHL succeeds. Yeah. I mean, certainly he did. He played against men. I will, I will admit to that, but the NHL rules state right. that that doesn't yeah. matter. I mean, the AHL is a professional league too. You could, mm -hmm. you're going up against men there as well. And Jason Robertson has some games under his belt in the A, um, you know, again, I just think it's, it's so it's, it's saddening. And again, so Minnesotan <laughs> to see this happen, that chatter. It's like, yeah, you have this amazing player. But, you know, it doesn't really count. And nah, he probably shouldn't win. And I love well, that you had mentioned the heart vote, too, because we yeah. had Elliot Friedman on a couple weeks ago. And he's the first one that I had heard from outside of Minnesota say, you know what? I think he deserves a look there, too, because you're absolutely right. He's done everything to transform this team. You mentioned Marion Gabrick. It's the first player that you've mm -hmm. seen. I mean, do you think he's even better? I know he's got a different tool belt oh, yeah. than Gabby had. But, he's right, better. I mean, he's just even he's surpasses Mr. Gabrick. Um, he does. And here's why. Three primary reasons why he's sur surpassed them right now one is gabber came into a league that until until we lost the 2004 five campaign was as boring as could possibly be it was uh it was a hook hook and grab league you know it was a, a jacques jacques trapped constantly like they went to a conference finals in part because they trapped uh, Gabby was never turned loose. Now that's not Gabby's fault, mm -hmm. but like he was never turned loose and he would get benched at times <laughs> if he did something dumb. Um, Kaprizov has more freedom. 
I also think the key is this, and this is what separates uh, the Gabrix, or I'm, I'm sorry, Kaprizov from the Gabrix, Fialas, and that group of which are very good players. But what separates them is Kaprizov's game, amazingly complete. <laughs> Gabrick never had this game. Like yeah. this guy goes into corners. <laughs> he, he works as hard as Zach does. And mm -hmm. I, I always said what made Zach a star was, was he's good but he also worked really hard, right? Like he'd go into corners, he'd go in front and, and he played like his dad with more skills. Yeah. Kaprizov one ups or three ups that <laughs> he goes into corners, he goes in front and his skills compared to Zach's are superstars. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, we've got, this is the complete game. Yeah. This is that he right now, I think could be, could be, he's not there yet, but he could be the best national hockey league player in this town's history north stars mm -hmm. or wild like it's that it's that impressive to me well and i always say too that kirill kaprizov he knows what everyone around him is going to do before everyone around him knows what they're going to do yeah. and i Love think that, the team yeah. will catch up to him eventually right they'll learn how to play with him and they they will adjust and they'll find better line mates for him and and that would be the goal right um but he is just his hockey iq is unbelievable and we've seen him for however many games now and still whenever he does stuff, I'm like, how did he make that play? How did he see that person? How did he get that shot off the tying goal against the blues to set it to OT? I was like, he just turns and shoots. He knows what's what point yeah, in the game you're at. And he point. just shoots the puck. I mean, he, right. he does everything. And, and to your point, Gabrick was not the all around player that, that Kirill Kaprizov is. And I think that's why everyone looks at him and says, this is the superstar of the Minnesota wild. They've been he's out for. there playing chess when everybody's playing checkers, right? Uh -huh. Like he's just got, <laughs> I lo I'm loving this analogy, by the way, I love that analogy. but <laughs> you know, incredible. and we had him his his clip from when we spoke with him earlier this week in our segment one and he mentioned this like he's just trying moves like that goal <laughs> that when he went in between the legs he's like oh yeah I watched that back and I've never scored on it but I'm glad it, it worked well like he's out there playing pond hockey with NHL yeah. players with no care and I think again that's something you don't see out of very many players in the league you really really don't see them here in Minnesota unless they're being played against the Minnesota <laughs> Wild so yeah. I think that's just tremendous Judd final question for you and I know you already touched on it so They'll get out of the first round. Your prediction is Minnesota wild will move on past the first round. When do you see, say Kirill does resign and say Bill Guerin gets Jules Eric's next resign another big one. And Kevin Fiala say he maybe brings them to term or very long contracts. If he can, uh, depending on the sap cap salary or salary cap, let's try that again. <laughs> um, <laughs> how many years before a true contending Minnesota wild team is in our vicinity? If Marco Rossi comes here next year and, and is the player that they expect him to be, and they can get a center who is a legit top, a legit second line guy, mm -hmm. who's a fringe first line guy. And mm -hmm. Rossi's as good as we expect. And the goaltending stays solid. I think next year starts a window where you can make legitimate playoff runs. Okay. I do. Um, this team has, this team has transformed its goaltending. The blue line's really damn good. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it goes deep now. Now I do think getting Cole back is important. Yeah. yeah. Like I, the, the stability he brings to me is, is such a bit like, he's not a sexy player to watch. He's more of a stay at home guy. That's all fine. But I mean, what he brings and that trade is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think getting him back, Benito coming back would be nice as well, but I think Cole, because of the position he plays, is the most important guy. And I think they'd back. be affordable. I feel like their contracts. Yeah, would I think be they're very... smart enough, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I would like they're not going to try and break realistic. the bank. No. Um, but but if you if you solve the center position for next year, just to have legitimate top two guys, I think next year is a year that you can start to make a run because Kaprizov. The greatest thing is so the. The weight sucked, right? Like, it's like, is Caprice up coming this year? Is he coming this year? Yeah. But he arrived here at the perfect time because mm -hmm. he's mature. Like, he plays a mature game. Like, there's yeah. not a lot of, well, that's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> so, so I, so the best part about the weight is, is we got him in his wheelhouse as far yeah. as fans to watch him, which is yeah. outstanding. Um, so, yeah. And I think that they can, so I think they can beat the Golden Knights this year in the first round. If Grubauer plays well, I don't think they get past the abs, to be clear. But if Grubauer has COVID effects, blah, 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 and they have to play Dubnik, I think Colorado is ripe for problems. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but I love how they match up against the Knights. 
And the funny thing is the team that they don't match with. And I don't know why the completely blues. Is the blues. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because they beat them up. And I think the blues and, and here's the one problem in the playoffs, if opposing teams can do it. And because the, the blues are doing it now, yeah. you have to beat up on Kaprizov, mm-hmm. not because he's going to go away, but just to try and sort of contain him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like he won't get frustrated and, and, and abandon ship. But I do think that if you are smart about it, you can take him off the puck and his game. So yeah. Judd, there's, there's no chance in hell, right? That the wild matchup against Dubnik and Dubnik stands on his head and wins a playoff series, right? That would never happen to them. <laughs> He'll, you know what? He'll make all the great saves <laughs> and then allow some like. Poppy um, Dumba, like bouncing yeah. puck to get Spurgeon will dump it in for a nice <laughs> and will go on goal and Dubnik will be, what happened? Why is that red light on? <laughs> Do you think you're going to see the same kind of quote unquote animosity toward Dubnik as we saw against Kemper. Maybe, maybe you're going to get a yes, little, give it F- to me. <laughs> a few dupes or anything like that. You know what? No, I I've heard that Kemper's a, a jerk. Like yeah. during- that shocks me for I some reason. I don't think Dubnik is. I mean, I think, no. people, yeah. I think people genuinely loved him. Yeah. And I mean, he was a super nice guy the problem as a teammate. And I think the problem for us in our job eventually became and I mean, he's not the only person became the constant. There's always a reason why mm-hmm. I allowed that goal. Mm-hmm. Like I was sort of screened. I was sort of this. I was, I mean, they should have called that. I think yeah. it's actually the defense. Should have stopped it. Like, Jesus. <laughs> Two nights back. You're exactly right. Mm-hmm. Jesse. That's why Talbot was so great. Like he, he clearly said, I, I want to do the that zoom stop. And, yeah. and then told us that. Yeah. Like how many times if Dubnik had ever said that? <laughs> I don't think there was, was, I can't think of one instance. Cause I remember there was one specific game last year where we were all floored that he didn't own up to the, how bad he played. I like I was that. just like, <laughs> you have got to be kidding me, man. Like, I love you too. I think you're a great dude, but yeah. Holy shit. Like you, you sucked like that. Yeah. It was your fault. Like it really wasn't, you know, the other two, like this is a hundred percent your fault. And yeah. yeah and so that's what I, that was my biggest takeaway Wednesday was just like, that put me more in cam's corner. Again, I was very skeptical. I don't want to hide that or pretend I've always been like rah, rah, cam Talbot's the next goalie. I'm very surprised how well this has turned out, you. but I'm with you on that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, but I do, yes. I think that was my biggest thing. Like you would never ever hear Devin do. Oh, he no, no. And, no. and the problem with the entire room is, there were probably three guys who would own things. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I mean, God bless him. He's a local <laughs> kid, but when, when, you know, Parisi would blame the team, yeah. but how many times did Parisi like be like, that's all me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And by the way, they have done a great job there. Zach Parisi to his credit too, mm-hmm. is playing the perfect role for his yes. age. Yeah, Fin- like, finally. I think he's finally come to you don't want to say acceptance because of course no player wants to accept <laughs> being less than what they're used to, but I think yeah, him buying into it a little bit more or just finally for. saying like yeah. this is what I am now, you know, I think yes. that's been huge because you do you have to have again that <laughs> mental mindset moving forward of like okay, what's going to be better for the team, but not what's better for Zach. And you know, I think that's tough pill to swallow for him. Uh, I imagine sure as we is. know, as we've seen. So, well, Judd, thanks again so much for joining us talking hockey. You know, I love it. Uh, where can people awesome. listen to you? Where can uh, people find all your goods? Scorenorth.com uh, is the place to, to go. And our podcasts are on probably all the place that all <laughs> podcasts are on now. What Apple, Spotify, blah, blah, yeah. blah, yeah. blah, yeah. blah. All the good ones. Yeah. But yeah. We we've got, uh, we've got our Mackie and Judd show, our purple daily show. And then because we can't think of a good name for it, Judd's Hockey Show. <laughs> I've, we've, been try, we've been trying to think of like a good local name. Yeah. So, so, so not like, like you guys have a good name. I was going to say, Bardo <laughs> Beauties like, was stolen, so you couldn't take that one. Like, yeah, it. and I mean, Dex is a good looking guy. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> He's a very good looking guy. But like, like I mean, I don't want to be the Dump and Chase podcast. Yeah. You yeah. know, the Offsides podcast. I was like trying to think of a good name. And I'm like, I still to this day can't think of a good name. Chad's hockey show. I think it's good. I think it's, I think it's you. you. I think it is perfectly yeah. you. Right? you. I think that fits That's a really compliment. Well. I exactly. It. Thanks, you guys. Well, thanks again for joining us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. This is producer Fred. I just wanted to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review. You name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app. We're back. Thanks 
again to Judd. I love just chatting with him <laughs> about hockey all the time. So I was like, dude, I need to get him on the podcast. Yeah. And I love that he's now put an optimistic spin on things. Him yeah. and I together have changed our <laughs> our ways because I think he's the one that kind of likes to be a little curmudgeon with me at, yeah. at times because I uh, I can be a little negative once in a while, but he's awesome. It was fun to talk to him. Yeah, but also with being negative, sometimes you bring up the important questions all the optimists are afraid to ask, uh, which is something I've always loved about Judd and, and about you as well, Jesse, um, is is asking those scary questions of, yes. hey, should we, should we pat this player on the back? <laughs> should we do this? Should we do that? Uh, Judd is not afraid to dive into those questions. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the interview because uh, I love those fun analytical interviews with Minnesota Wild people. You're gonna, we're going to do more of those as the playoffs yeah. are coming about. <laughs> we're going to have more fun people to come on and just break down hockey with us. Um, yeah. more often. I know you guys have loved some of our one-off guests and we'll still continue to do that. But I think more people like Judd share the wealth uh, yeah. will be good up for debate. Alexis, we've, t- we talk about it at length for like the <laughs> fifth straight episode, but I think yeah. that's okay. Cause people seem to love it and it still yes. continues to be a topic. Um, the Calder cup, or the, yes, the Calder trophy rather. It has obviously been a big discussion this year, whether Kirill Kaprizov should be eligible for such an award, considering he's not quote unquote, a rookie, which he is an NHL rookie (laughs) at the age of 24. He is a rookie having played six seasons in the KHL. However, people are having doubts on him and they just, they don't want to give us nice things. And it's upsetting. They don't. don't. So our our up for debate was if you were to change it, are you going to a, would you change and limit the number of pro games? Would you keep everything the same as it is, which has no limit on those on KHL games, rather they have a limit. Obviously if you had Nico Sturm still technically considered a rookie for those of you who don't know, I think he got just under the limit yep, last season last of games year. played and that's regular season games too. I don't think playoffs count. Cause obviously plenty of young guys come in during the playoffs and uh age limit. Would you keep it down, down to 23 and under um, Kirill again, just turning 24 last week, but certainly plenty of 19 year olds popping up in the league. Mm-hmm. Jason Robertson, I think is 21. Um, who was his big contender in case you guys hadn't heard. So <laughs> Alexis, what would you do? Uh, this one. So this is kind of when I went on my rant, I was kind of like, this is a whole separate conversation. Like you cannot talk about this in the realm of who deserves to win the Calder this year. If you're upset about the guidelines for what makes a person a rookie, that's a valid conversation to have. And that's what we're talking about right now in our up for debate. And I honestly don't see a reason to, to change anything. And the, the reason for that is, is the NHL, just like every other league in the world, men's and women's are all unique in their own ways. So quite frankly, I don't really care if somebody played mm-hmm. five seasons in the KHL or 10 seasons in the HL. I don't care if you're 45, when you, if you're playing in your rookie season, in the NHL, every league is unique and different. And when Kirill came to the NHL, everyone talked about, well, what about the adjustment between the KHL and the NHL? Is that going to be hard? Now you all want to say the KHL is too <laughs> similar to the NHL pick a side. It's you can only have one or the other. Um, and when you look at the history of Calder winners and their ages, it is few and far between that somebody over the age of like 21 is kind of the the sweet spot and below Um, someone over the age of 21 winning is pretty rare, especially in the modern era, like the last 30, 40 years. Um, I mean, the oldest player to ever win, it was 31. And they changed the rules after that because of it. Um, I mean, that is too old. That's, Let's be real. Like, I'm little, sorry. That's a bit I much. hopped on skates. Yeah, I'm a rookie, but I'm old. Yeah. So I, uh, it's like the kid failing high school and he's like 25 playing yeah. with all the high school kids. Yeah. Um, but so I, I don't really see an issue with it because if it was constantly like 25 year olds winning it, then it's like, okay, is there a disadvantage here to these young guys who truly are like still kids and coming into the NHL? That's a valid question, but it's not happening frequently enough in my opinion for them to look at this and say, Oh, there's a problem. And he's still a rookie in the NHL. That's the guidelines of of being a rookie. And I don't see a reason to change the age. Uh, nobody was up in arms about it when Panarin won it at age 24. Was it maybe because he played for the Chicago Blackhawks? I'm on to all of you. Don't think you're going to get away with that. Um, I mean, and people did get pissed about that. I do (laughs) recall a little bit. There was some, yeah, whatever. But what do you think, Jesse? You think there's a change that needs to be made? I mean, obviously not this year. You keep it the way it is. <laughs> God damn it. Like, I'm sorry. We're not making things. They just different. change it in a week. They're like, yeah, by the way, you have <laughs> to be 23 or younger. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I lean toward keeping the same, I guess, of, of those options. If you were, if I had to say limit the pro games or age, I don't mind 23 and under because you are seeing more and more young guys coming in and making, you know, big breaks into the league as, yeah. as they are. So, I mean, possibly that. 
in order for them to do the limit of pro games, the NHL has to recognize the KHL and they love pretending that that league does not exist, despite (laughs) it being a very successful league. uh, Yager will attest to that. (laughs) Kovalev will attest to that. I mean, you've had plenty of players who have left the NHL to go over there and they have that right. So until the NHL can kind of not feel so protective Sounds over like their, their problem, not yeah, Kuro that's, that's on them. And this is an yeah. NHL awarded award. Yep. So that doesn't have to count. So I guess if anything, I would lower the age limit a little bit because I think that could maybe make things really interesting and really put maybe yeah. a little more pressure on some of these very young rooks and, yeah. and see what they're made of. That's but fair. ultimately I like it where it is. I like Kirill Caprice for the color cup and uh, that's me signing off. Thank you. That's that on that audio. That's all that's all we got. <laughs> no, that's going to wrap up another episode for the bar down beauties. Again, shout out to presenting sponsor. So Don't forget to toss down bar down beauties at checkout for free shipping on all purchases. We've got some really fun things in the works. Uh, some more merch coming out at you. Also better edge. You get a free $10 at better edge, B E T T O R edge.com uh, for all your sports gambling needs, legal sports gambling <laughs> needs, ladies and gentlemen. Also Jim beam, pour yourself a delicious glass of Jim Beam. It's summertime, baby. We can get yeah, out there. You're going to be watching hockey, drinking some gym. It's uh, yeah. it's not all bad. And obviously <laughs> shout out to talk North for letting us on their lovely network and to the masses, all your little <laughs> eardrums and eyeballs and all of that. And thank you to you guys. You guys continue to rock. We love all the sport. We love all the engagement. We love all the fun. I've been getting so many really great little DMS from you guys saying how much fun we've made it. And that's awesome. I want yeah. to do that. We need to be in that space. Even, even Russo said that we were really, really <laughs> fun at this. He said, I'm not, he's got high this. standards. Yes. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, leave that space for us. That's our space. Then we're the fun ones. So, uh, you guys rock, keep, keep it up. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, share, like, We'll be back next week with more Hockey Talk. Have a good one.